Let's talk skillets. There's a lot of skillets out there in the market. A lot of them will promise you non-stick coatings that will last a lifetime and get you that perfect seared steak. Well, pro-level chefs all around the world don't use any of that. And I can guarantee you that your favorite restaurant is probably using either a cast iron skillet, carbon steel skillet, or stainless steel skillet. I recently made a video reviewing a carbon steel wok where I showed you guys how to properly clean it, store it, and get that perfect seasoning for a non-stick coating that's gonna last you a lifetime. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys why in your kitchen you should only be considering one of three skillets and why everything else is junk. Let's dive in. Okay, the first skillet that we should talk about and is probably the most budget-friendly skillet and really hard to beat, especially if you're starting off as a chef, is the cast iron skillet. The cast iron skillet is probably the oldest skillet out there and most likely your grandparents have a really good cast iron skillet stored away somewhere in their basement or attic. One of the best brands that you can get is actually Lodge. Lodge is a really good brand, but they do get kind of a bad rap because their cast iron skillets are pretty rough on the inside. Now, a lot of people will tell you, especially with the older cast iron skillets, a smoother surface finish will get you a better nonstick coating and will help you sear your meats and get a nice, even plane when you put your proteins down. I'm here to tell you that a cast iron skillet is gonna be a really good skillet regardless of the surface finish. However, I do agree that a smoother surface finish does mean a better cast iron skillet. For all my cast iron skillets, I've actually sanded down the insides of them and made a really smooth surface. Now later on, we're gonna talk about carbon steel. And carbon steel has a really smooth surface right out of the factory. And it sears meat exceptionally well with an amazing nonstick coating. So I am a firm believer in a smoother surface finish on a cast iron skillet will get you better performance. But Buying a lodge with the rougher surface finish is still gonna get you really good performance. It's up to you if you wanna sand it down or not. So let's talk about cast iron. Skillets that are made out of cast iron have some of the best properties and are famously known for getting a really good sear. Because cast iron is so densely packed, it tends to retain heat really, really well. Cast iron doesn't necessarily get really piping hot. For example, stainless steel gets extremely hot and can shoot up to a really high temperature really fast. But where cast iron really shines is retaining that heat. And once it gets up to that operating temperature that you're looking for, it tends to retain an even temperature all around. Cast iron can fry. Cast iron can sear a really mean steak. It can saute vegetables. You can make pizza in cast iron. You can bake in cast iron. It will literally do everything pretty well. It takes a while to get to operating temperature because it's so densely packed, it takes a while to cool down. So that translates in, if you need to adjust your temperature, you better adjust it well in advance because you can easily burn your food. If you realize that your temperature is set too high and you wanna lower it, the skillet's gonna take a while to adjust. So dialing in your temperatures and adjusting during your cooks can get pretty tricky with cast iron. There's a bit of a learning curve, but once you do figure it out, once you get to know it a little bit better, it's amazing. You just have to kind of plan ahead. Personally, I think everybody should start off with cast iron. The cast iron skillet that I showed you in the intro and in the talking head is a 10 inch cast iron skillet. I bought years and years ago and I think it was 15 bucks. And for 15 bucks, it's a hell of a bargain. I highly recommend for all the skillets in this video to at least get 10 inches or larger, preferably 12 inch skillets because 12 inch skillets are literally the jack of all trade skillets. You can feed a family in a 12 inch skillet. Now I remember before COVID, a large 12 inch cast iron skillet can be found on Amazon usually at a great sale price of 20 bucks. I mean, come on, $20 for a pro skillet? That's incredible. Now, due to COVID, the prices have increased quite a bit. All materials kind of got expensive and all the prices increased during COVID. So you're not necessarily getting the prices of three, four years ago, but you are getting a comparable price between the rest of the skillets out there. And the good thing about Lodge is they come pre-seasoned from the factory. Now the seasoning from the factory is decent and it will get you started, but I highly recommend after cleaning it from all the grease from the manufacturer, 
you should try to season your cast iron skillet at least two more times. Because really, once you do that, you got a really good nonstick coating, it's properly seasoned, and you're really ready to go. I recommend for cast iron skillets and carbon steel skillets to season them using the potato peel method, which I do show you using the carbon steel wok. So if you go back and watch this video, I actually show you how to take care of a carbon steel skillet and clean it from the initial manufacturer's grease, and then use the potato peel method to give that initial seasoning. And with cast iron and carbon steels, you do have to be very careful with how you do clean them at the end of your cooks. You need to wash them and then completely dry them on the stove tops and lubricate them before storing them every single time or you do run the risk of getting rust and you definitely don't want that. Now, once you do develop a deep seasoning, the risk of rust kind of diminishes over the years. I would never soak a cast iron or carbon steel skillet and I would always dry them. But I know of people who would dry them on a stove top and then they just skip the you know oil at the end, but they do make sure they're absolutely dry. So here's the pros of cast iron skillets. They are extremely versatile. They retain heat very well. Once they do get up to operating temperatures, they maintain an even distribution of heat and have incredible searing capabilities, which leads to amazing caramelization on your meats. Cast iron skillets are relatively cheap and propel you into that pro level category. Will make you into a better cook because they do have a learning curve, but the learning curve is really all of the fundamentals of cooking. So once you've mastered cooking on a cast iron skillet, you've basically mastered cooking. And finally, cast iron skillets are almost indestructible. It's a tool that you're gonna cherish and pass down to your kids and grandkids. Now let's talk about the cons of cast iron skillets. Well, the biggest con is they tend to rust. So you have to be very careful when you clean them. But once a cast iron skillet is seasoned, Cleaning it is not the issue. Food just slides right off. Taking that extra 30 seconds at the end of a cook to make sure it's fully dried off and putting it back on the stove to heat and evaporate all the moisture. And then you just put a drop or two of oil and just wipe it all down to make sure you have a nice protective lubricant on the cast iron skillet at all times. It's a very small thing you have to do at the end of a cook that really goes a long way. It's not an inconvenience at all. Cast iron skillets are pretty heavy, especially when you're getting a 12 inch skillet. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there are saying, well, I'm a man and I can toss it 100 yards down the field. That's great. Your girlfriend or wife probably doesn't want to be using that thing to flip or saute vegetables day in and day out. So it's another thing to consider. Even this 10 inch skillet, is still pretty heavy. That's probably one of the biggest things that I don't like about cast iron skillets is you do tend to get fatigued. The initial cook or two, you're fine, but then once you start tossing things and really getting in a groove, you really do feel the weight at the end of the day. So cast iron skillets are pretty heavy. Another big thing with cast iron skillets and carbon steel skillets as well is that they tend to react with acidic foods. Now, this is kind of a touchy area. I feel like cast iron skillets don't tend to react as much as carbon steel skillets do, but they do tend to react initially. But once carbon steel and cast iron get their seasoning down, I don't see them reacting anymore. I've never had them react to where it completely stripped off the coating or anything like that. Quite honestly, that's usually an initial seasoning thing. I have had it happen initially, but the seasoning comes right back. And then once you've kind of used it for a few months or so, you've built enough of the seasoning that you really don't necessarily need to worry about acidic foods that much, but I would definitely build up the seasoning first. So what that translates to is, if you wanna make Italian food or sauce heavy food, cast iron skillets and carbon steel skillets aren't really the best for that. If you're looking to make sauces out of the fond, fond is basically the leftover sticky bits that are left on stainless steel skillets. You can make a sauce out of that by adding wine or a chicken or beef broth or whatever broth that you wanna use. And then you literally, once, once everything heats up, you literally scrape off those burnt bits on the bottom of the skillet, which are really tasty, and take your sauces to a whole nother level. Well, because carbon steel skillets and cast iron skillets are so non-stick, it's very rare that you're ever gonna be able to have enough fond to make a sauce out of. So that could be a big negative. So if you're really into making sauces, cast iron skillets and carbon steel skillets, 
are not the right skillets for you. Okay, now let's talk about the next skillet, the carbon steel skillet. This is a newer skillet that I recently bought, and as you can see here, the seasoning is still developing. On some of my other skillets, the inside is completely black, which basically means I've developed a really good seasoning. And that's what you want with cast iron and carbon steel. You want to develop a good, deep seasoning, and that translates to almost a black surface. And once you've achieved that, you got the only skillet you're ever going to need. They're sort of hybrid skillets. They kind of take all of the best properties from a cast iron skillet and a stainless steel skillet and combine it into this perfect skillet. They're much lighter than a cast iron skillet, but they're heavy and they develop an amazing nonstick coating. They will definitely outlive you and it's something that you're gonna pass down to your kids and grandkids for sure, just like a cast iron skillet. They're actually really famous in France and Europe. They're also really popular in American restaurants. Eight times out of 10, you're probably gonna see carbon steel skillets at your favorite restaurant. But they never really took off in the USA with home cooks. And that's because cast iron was so popular in the United States and because cast iron and carbon steel were seen as very similar. People never really gave them a try in the US. I can tell you that that's definitely changed. In recent years, a lot of people have been gravitating towards carbon steel skillets, especially after they were initially exposed to cast iron. I feel like once you got a cast iron skillet, your next logical step is to upgrade to a carbon steel skillet. We've already talked about weight. Carbon steel skillets are much lighter than cast iron skillets, but carbon steel skillets get hot really quickly. They can really get up to high temperatures. So that means they're gonna sear food amazingly. They don't retain heat as well as cast iron skillets, but that also means that they don't share any of those negatives. Carbon steel skillets will react to temperature changes accordingly. They will heat up and cool down much faster than cast iron skillets. Because carbon steel skillets are essentially iron skillets with a little bit of carbon in them, they need to be treated with the same level of attention that you would give to a cast iron skillet. You have to make sure you clean them and completely dry them up, and that includes putting them back on the stovetop and letting all the moisture evaporate. And then you should also put a drop of oil and lubricate them before storage. Food literally slides off of carbon steel skillets. I've never had a mess with any of my carbon steel skillets. When it comes time to clean them, oftentimes I can just literally wipe the inside and I'm done. I usually put it back on the stove, sanitize it, put a drop of oil, lubricate it, store it away. I never even have to use soap or water. Just like cast iron, carbon steel can be used for almost anything. I've made pizzas in it, I've baked, I've cooked and seared amazing steaks in it. You can saute in it and you can even make sauces, but again, you won't have any fond. So if you're really big on sauces, carbon steel and cast iron skillets are just not the right skillet for you. Eggs will literally slide right out of carbon steel skillet. It's like foods ice skating on this thing and it will last you a lifetime. In Europe, just like in the United States, European families were often fined their grandparents' carbon steel skillets stashed away somewhere in the attic where antique cast iron skillets are sought after. Antique carbon steel skillets are sought after in Europe. Biggest cons of carbon steel. There really isn't any. That's the beauty of carbon steel. Carbon steel skillets have kind of like shot up in price recently. They're pretty much a middle ground between stainless steel and cast iron in regards to price. And three years ago or so, I think I bought my Mineral B, which is a pretty thick skillet. It's, it's a little bit higher in quality. And I think I bought that around 65, 70 bucks. And then I ended up getting a Matford 12 inch skillet, which was on sale at around 55 bucks. So a few years ago, their prices weren't too bad. Now I know very recently, everything has gone up because of COVID. Materials are just, you know, really hard to get. And uh, I think everything went up at least 25, you know, 30, 40%. Carbon steel skillets are probably in the middle ground regarding the price. Honestly, for me, carbon steel skillets are my favorite skillets to use. So I don't see very many cons, to be honest. The next skillet to consider is a stainless steel skillet. I've had this one for a really long time, and this is a very natural thing to see. It just means that I'm using the heck out of it and I am. My dad has been in the restaurant business for over 45 years and I've went to some of the best restaurants in LA as a kid and as an adult where 
I've gotten some special access and treatment <laughs> and really good food over the years. And um, yeah, anytime we went to a restaurant, we saw a stainless steel skillet, they usually looked like this. So stainless steel skillets are a bit more pricier. The particular model that I have here, and the only stainless steel skillet that I own, is an all-clad three-ply stainless steel skillet. Three-ply just means that the manufacturer uses three layers of material to manufacture and make their stainless steel skillet. It's usually some conductive material wrapped into the stainless steel to give it a much more consistent heating property and to overall improve it and make it better. All-clad, in my opinion, is probably the leading manufacturer right now for stainless steel skillets. They make amazing skillets and they back them up with a great warranty. However, stainless steel skillets usually come in at about a hundred bucks. This three ply all clad stainless steel skillet, it's usually $110, but you can find it on sale on Amazon for around a hundred bucks. They do also make a five ply. I was fortunate enough to use five ply um, when I would shadow my dad in his restaurants. And all the chefs would tell me that in a restaurant setting, there's probably a difference. It's, it's not a huge difference, but for the average home cook, you're really not gonna notice that much of a difference. So I would say save your money and get a three-ply. Stainless steel skillets are the lightest out of the three skillets, get really hot tremendously fast, and they tend to cool down really quickly as well. Biggest pro of stainless steel skillets is they do not rust, so you don't have to worry about having to dry them or doing any special treatments after to completely dry them off and keep them from oxidating. But the biggest con of stainless steel skillets is, yes, they do stick. Now, you'll see a lot of videos out there where people will tell you, no, they won't. And that's true if you follow the fundamentals and you make sure that they heat up properly before throwing your food in there and you make sure you have enough fat, cooking oil or grease or whatever it is that you're using, yes, food won't stick necessarily as bad as you would think, but it does stick. If you don't believe me, try making scrambled eggs. It can be done, but you have to put a lot of oil on there and it's a lot more work and you have to be very mindful of the temperatures. Stainless steel skillets can literally cook anything. Acidic foods, meats, proteins, you can bake in them. You can do anything you want with stainless steel skillets, but they do one thing extremely well, and that's fond. If you wanna make an amazing sauce, stainless steel skillets are for you. Let's say you're cooking a delicious protein and you get all those nice sticky bits at the bottom of your pan, we'll throw in some butter, onions, garlic, a little bit of white wine, some chicken broth, and you can cook up a really great sauce to pair with the dish. And with stainless steel, that's entirely possible because they do stick. I tend to use mine mainly for Italian dishes or something where I know I wanna make a sauce right after. And that's what stainless steel skillets are really good at. They're really light, they heat up quickly, they sear amazingly, they're very easy to clean, and they create fond for amazing sauces. The biggest cons of stainless steels, however, are they stick. They stick like crazy. They're not as forgiving if you make mistakes. I mean, they get hot really quickly. They cool down really quickly, but if you're not paying attention, you can either put your food in when the skillet's not necessarily hot, and boom, now you've just created a really sticky mess, or you'll get distracted and you've burnt your food really quickly. I feel like every kitchen should have at least one stainless steel skillet if you can afford it. It's something that's gonna be really hit and miss with people. For example, my wife, she loves a stainless steel skillet. At the end of her cook, no matter how sticky her stainless steel skillet is, she can just toss it in the sink and I'll eventually get to it. So, so the stainless steel skillet for her, it's probably one of her favorite skillets. I think for cast iron skillets, she, she doesn't like picking up any of the big skillets and she tends to stay with the smaller skillets because they're really heavy. And then she definitely loves the carbon steel skillets, but I don't think she likes to do that extra step at the end, you know, completely drying them off and cleaning them. But other than that, the two biggest cons are the price and they're not as non-stick as carbon steel and stainless steel. But the pros are, they do everything very well. They heat up quickly, they cool down quickly, you can make anything in them, you don't have to worry about you know, rusting, but they do require a bit of a skill set to kind of master them, if that makes any sense. And you'll find a lot of restaurants using them where if you see an amazing sauce on the menu, they probably made it on a stainless steel skillet.
So if you can only have one skillet, one skillet, what's my recommendation? That's a tough one. So I've gotten rid of all of my cast iron skillets, except for one. I don't know if I would say cast iron. And trust me, I was a huge cast iron fan. I know there's like a very devoted following, but I have gotten rid of all my cast iron skillets. Ironically, I've given them away to friends and family that, are, that had just started cooking and now, you know, I've actually moved on to carbon steel. Man, that's a tough one. If I can only have one skillet. Because I do make a lot of Italian food and I love making sauces out of the fond. Oh, man, that's tough. I think I've stumped myself, to be honest. I love carbon steel skillets. Like, I'm thinking right now, like, if, if I only had one stainless steel skillet, then it's like, oh, everything sticks, you know? But it can make anything. I mean, a stainless steel skillet can make a great steak. If I wanna be practical, if it was the end of the world and I can only have one skillet and it had to be something that I can just set it and forget it, yeah, it would be a stainless steel skillet because it doesn't rust, it does everything all the other skillets can do. It's not as non-stick, but if I put a ton of oil in it, that should do it. <laughs> um, but it's not the end of the world. So if I can only have one skillet, it would be a carbon steel skillet. That's it for me, guys. I hope you liked my video. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Hey, everybody. How'd you guys like that last video? Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified of my next video. And if you can, please share with your family and friends. I would really appreciate it. Here's some more content that I think you guys are really gonna enjoy. Check them out. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.